Hello, dear friends. We are happy to greet you again on live broadcast Astana Latra TV in the video Science in the Creative Society. Today, our broadcast is translated into English simultaneously by the volunteers of Atra International Public Movement. And before we introduce our guest, I would like to tell you a little bit of a story of history, how I got familiar with this works of this person. When I was senior in school, I got a book, The Physics of Faith. The most interesting thing is that in this book, I was greatly touched by the junction between science and religion. On the side of religion, people came to God, and on the side of science also. This is the way that leads to one and the same thing. In this book, there are many science fictional technologies which seems to be seem to be science fiction right now, and we'll talk about some of them today. In this book, it is also mentioned that there is a theory that unites and combines all uh, the currently existing theories. It unites fundamental fields, fundamental forces and it creates a joint, uh, let's say, foundation for physics as science. This theory is uh, very, you know, resonating for me. And uh, when I graduated from the university, I also tried to look at this theory, but the problem, the complexity of the text, the wordings stopped me, and there were some other material things to do, so I kind of switched my attention. But today, I'm happy to introduce to you our guest, a marvelous person who's very kind. It is Gennady Ivanovich Shipov. He's a theorist physicist, he's the follower of Einstein, and he's the author of the book, The Theory of Physical Vacuum. Today we will talk with you about this theory, about the technologies, and the materials of our broadcast will be also provided for the upcoming conference Kaleidoscope of Facts, the Prospects of Civilization. And our traditional first question will be asked by my co-host also, but Gennady Ivanovich, greetings to you, uh, and also we have Julia, it's my co-host, and Vladimir is our host, and Julia will ask the first traditional question. Gennady, could you please tell us what brought you to science and why you chose this particular path in your life? This happened when I was 14 years old, and I don't know which way, but I got the book that is called, that is the title of this book uh, by Vladimir Lenin. It is called Materialism and Imperial Criticism. While reading this book, I saw that it turns out uh, that, you know, Lenin was considering the, the results of the special theory of uh, relativity theory by Einstein, and he actually mentioned that the mass of a body depends on the speed of its movement. When I read this phrase, I, you know, I was uh, astonished, I, I was surprised, I couldn't just imagine such an interaction and correlation in real life, so I decided to sort this out. Well, it is, is, it is really amazing, but participants of our movement were inspired also by the book uh, inspired to study uh, more of laws of physics and basically the laws of this world. This book is here, it is called Alatra. And on page 30, I would like to read a quote for you that really actually relates to your job. It's, uh, it relates to the uh, physical vacuum. And then I'll ask you a question. Right now, modern physics has already approaching, is already approaching the physical vacuum theory. How did scientists call the lower states of quantum fields? Physical vacuum in this this uh, theory is characterized by the absence of any real particles, but at the same time, it has uh, a plenty of virtual particles. At the same time, there is a, another theory, but 
It is denied so far by the mainstream science. It considers the emergence of particles and antiparticles of six classes from the primary vacuum by its uh, division through uh, spin rotation directions and appearance of torsion fields, right-handed and left-handed, and this provokes the emergence of new matter. Here, as we can understand, the basis of the zero physical vacuum uh, is uh, torsion fields. Could you please tell us in simple language for our viewers what torsion fields are? Yes, I would really like to comment on this part uh, in the, with the fact that the theory of physical vacuum is basically, basically it appeared, as we know, according to the sources, the first uh, ideas of the vacuum of the uh, void appeared 5,000 years ago, approximately. And already at that time, in those works in Vedas, uh, it was mentioned that the source of all material world is the void, the emptiness. So the zero physical vacuum is not quite new. Uh, it's uh, quite old, but at every stage of development of society and science, the imagine, imagination, the ideas of vacuum and void were changing. There are very uh, theories of vacuum, they, uh, they were called differently, for example, the ESA theory. It's one of the series of physical vacuum in its plain, um, plain explanation. But now the question is, what what is uh, those these uh, torsion fields have about? Uh, torsion, in translation from French, means rotation, twisting, uh, turning, and for the first time torsion was related to physics, and uh, the first mentions of torsion fields was by French mathematician Richardin. He said that if matter is rotating, a torsion field arises around it. It was in 1920, that's his word of that time, and since that time there were plenty of theories uh, that used torsion fields in official physics, but it, uh, as a result it turned out that there are not just one kind of torsion fields, but there are many of them. And, and uh, those which scientists, other scientists used, uh, it was related, but that torsion field, which is used in uh, the works on uh, physical vacuum, this torsion field actually relates to the physical field of inertia or inertia field, which is given to each of us in our daily perceptions. For example, if you want to know, really know what the torsion field is, you should go and ride a swing. Uh, when you see the inertia forces throwing you away, that's the field which actually emerges due to rotation. It's a torsion field. The torsion field is the third one after the two other. Uh, the first field, which scientists began to understand, is the gravitational field. There is such a picture that or even a parable that uh, Newton was sitting on the an apple tree and an apple hit his head and so he uh, wrote this formula of interaction between two bodies um, in the gravitational form and this gravitational field this is what we feel we also feel electromagnetic fields through light and also we have as it turns out the third field the torsion field these are fundamental fields while everything else this is what we people invented the field of inertia or inertia Inertia field is uh, actually the torsion field, it's a mathematical term. Uh, the torsion field and the inertia field are the same. Inertia field is the term introduced by Einstein, but now it, uh, equations are found and this field is all, all the time we get it from perception. This is what the torsion field is. Basically, no, it's better to say inertial field. Thank you very much. And we would also like to ask you what urged you to create the theory of physical vacuum? Perhaps you had certain tasks or maybe several tasks that uh, could not be uh, 
result through the current uh, series so you started doing uh, working on this one yes that's true there are tasks uh, put before physics by einstein albert einstein he actually left uh, us with the solution of this task how he wanted to solve the task of geometrization of electrodynamics maxwell's equations do not relate to any geometry um, other than there was Minkowski who also tried to use these equations in some works but Einstein wanted to produce such equations uh, for electromagnetic field that would uh, distort uh, the space and the first task was resolved in 1972 in one of my works but it wasn't quite total result, but I found the approach to solving it. The second task was to geometrize uh, the geometrization of quantum mechanics, and that was also the task placed on us, uh, put for us uh, by Einstein. And in 1976 and 77, I published several works and uh, resolved at that time as I saw it and then uh, it turned out that it's not enough in order to maintain a unified soul solid theory so this movement ahead brought me to the point that I saw that the uh, the theory of unified field is the theory of physical vacuum basically according to the currently existing uh, theoretical physics everyone knows that elementary particles are emerging from vacuum if this is so then we need to have equation that describes vacuum and if we know the equation we will be able to describe the vacuum and the particles that uh, are born in it the vacuum is the basis where from where matter is born uh, that's the pass i got through and in 19 88 it was the year of the let's say christian christian of christianing of uh, baptism of ras uh, it was the anniversary uh, of christianity in russia and there i were, uh, wrote and published a book about the physical vacuum there were the simplest points of this theory there were two monograms at that time i was not uh, let's say a recognized uh, researcher it was impossible for me to publish a big scientific work but i kind of placed my two monographs and registered them uh, and the mathematical part uh, basically mathematical part of this theory was a separate monogram uh, and there was the physical part in the second monogram that's the way that's the way i went through it was through solving tasks which were imposed on physics by albert einstein and this is all reflected in publications so it turns out that your theory actually went beyond einstein's theory yes it did it it went beyond because he had only two tasks geometrization of electrodynamics and quantum mechanics but as a result in order to cope with all that i had to maintain the zero of physical vacuum to write down equations and principles because if we just take equations they remain solely mathematical constructs but we need to instill physics into these equations and it is very important to know the principles on which these equations are based so uh, the, we can we can conclude that you not just go beyond the theory of Einstein but also beyond the mainstream science and I suspect that there are many obstacles on your way and from just one point of view uh, the question is what are you doing this for why for the sake of what you know purely it's a purely scientific interest it is such an interesting job to get certain you know scientific results which were uh, never existing before and which are interesting and uh, the question is uh, how everything is arranged which is around because science actually 
has two major features or characteristics by which we need science. First of all, we are interested in knowing what the world around us is arranged of. It's such an interesting task to cope with this. And the second point is that from science we require that it brings us certain, you know, things which would facilitate our life and make it more comfortable yes comfort we would like not to go on food but we would like to drive a car or in flight an airplane perhaps maybe to fly to other planets on some totally different technological principles and this is the major motive it's my interest in discoveries, it's my interest in knowing what is there beyond the horizon, what is there up, out there beyond the net, uh, currently known science. Thank you very much, Gennady Ivanovich. I would like to remind to our viewers that we have a chat and you can leave your comments and send questions uh, if you have any questions to uh, our guest we will surely voice them in the broadcast and perhaps you will get answers and now uh, we would like to ask the question about the theory of physical vacuum and torsion fields how can this be used in practice basically throughout one century we know such a notion as free energy generators of free energy and as we know from history one of the first creators of such um, generators was nikola tesla after that after him there were many amateurs uh, researchers who tried to create such gen generators and in this respect we would like to ask you a very question very interesting question about this technology don't these generators violate the second law of thermodynamics and where do they take energy from and how to make free energy available let me answer the last question. So how can we produce such sources of energy for each person? You know, um, this is a question uh, that I shouldn't answer, but all the politicians and uh, the leaders of the government should answer. But from the scientific um, um, point of view, then uh, creating um, quantum right um, mechanics. So when creating quantum mechanics, it was discovered that this is the main state. Um, oh, uh, this is the basic state, right? As uh, um, the main state of the vacuum is um, well. It, it is such a concept that uh, it has, well, on average, it has this um, uh, kind of uh, zero energy or spin or whatever. But in fact, vacuum is kind of a boiling broth because uh, uh, even uh, from zero, right, there are different uh, fluctuations of um, particle and the energy of these particles, uh, it is different from zero, kind of, and if we theoretically count uh, the energy of this kind of boiling broth vacuum, that is, um, then we can find that actually vacuum, is, this energy is infinite. So vacuum is something like, you know, um, on average, it has infinite energy and uh, the question arises can we use this energy and uh, also the just uh, bare existence of this energy or so-called fluctuations um, they were discovered in the 50s and uh, many uh, scientists got the Nobel Prize uh, for example American scientists a uh, physicist mm, uh, right uh, he, he he got the Nobel Prize for or uh, that he had calculated uh, that uh, the atom of the hydrogen atom is actually a quantum structure and uh, if, if we place it in vacuum then um, it's um, energetic levels they kind of uh, start to shift uh, because vacuum uh, right because atom hydrogen atom right it takes energy from the vacuum and um, uh, so we can uh, just even uh, calculate that um, 
the frequency range, right? And uh, it is about uh, 1,075 uh, megahertz. And uh, so, um, actually, let's uh, look at uh, people, right? Our nature. So we are really very complicated structures. And if we look at a person just kind of inside, right, at his structure, then we'll see uh, elementary particles, right? And elementary particles, they have a spin, a spin kind of a rotation spin. And and um, all, all, all the atoms, they have their own levels, uh, complicated ones. And all this is kind of, um, well, uh, all of this is, is situated in vacuum, right? And then uh, we can say that uh, actually this kind of vacuum, it kind of gives us energy, right? Or we could say that a vacuum is like an outer source of this energy. Um, so uh, I, I don't think that if we just take an experiment, um, if we just um, get rid of these fluctuations, I, I, I'm not sure what will happen to us. And that is, uh, let us really um, just design such constructions that would take this energy and uh, transform it. And now, uh, how is it connected uh, with Toshan fields? And uh, uh, well, uh, they are. Well, it is all connected with social fields, but uh, let us not go deep into details. But I would like just to, you know, to continue um, answering your first question that uh, from the very beginning, uh, it turns out that uh, uh, gens, according to the law of the uh, energy um, preservation, right, uh, the uh, second, according to the second uh, law of uh, uh, yeah, thermodynamics, uh, it uh, how it was formulated, vacuum was not taken into account then, but we should take uh, vacuum into account. Or if, if we t don't, do not take uh, it into account, then if we take some physical phenomena uh, into notice, then it really um, the second law of this thermodynamics could be violated, but again within the framework of the old science. So we, we kind of need that uh, we we lack we lack of kind of physical vacuum not to have those violations. Uh, why so? Because out of this uh, theory of um, uh, th th theoretical vacuum, uh, th th there is um, lots of actual energy with um, uh, just a neg negative charge. Okay, but if there is energy with um, this negative charge, right? So even this law of uh, electrodynamics, right? Um, uh, so it, it is already allowed to create um, just a, a generator of perpetual motion or perpetual motion machine of some kind because you know this energy or this negative energy it never kind of decreases uh, but uh, you can uh, get positive energy and use it in your own purposes so uh, this is such a structure and that is the second law of the thermal dynamics should be generalized if there are kind of negative um, masses and uh, so there are some of course other interesting theories um, that uh, is another question that in modern theory um, this um, theory kind of prohibited but uh, but why why should we just uh, ignore it because uh, in physics actually you know uh, everything uh, is kind of um, defined by experiments right so we can make an experiment and prove uh, just that it is possible. So can we, are there any uh, experiments, can you describe them that show uh, the uh, validity of this theory? Yes, in fact, there are many, many experiments like that. And uh, moreover, uh, these experiments, they are already uh, published in the reports of uh, the Academy of Sciences, but uh, um, so, but uh, what I'm trying, uh, I will give you just one experiment, you know, um, about um, super, um, uh, okay, uh, super color, uh, just registration of uh, uh, luminary signals, right? So uh, it, even uh, Nikolai Kozaru had uh, just wrote about that. So uh, if we take, um, so what is this experiment about? 
about, um, for example, we have light coming from a far, far star, and um, uh, this light, right, it, it kind of it, it comes to us uh, during many, many light years, and uh, um, when we have this light here on Earth, we, when it, we get it, we can see it in telescopes, for example, so uh, this um, star, right, on the sky, uh, it, it kind of already actually um, had moved into another place. And um, so um, what should we be learning a a about, right? Um, yeah, and so of course, there are scientists, right? Um, um, he uh, just, um, just directed his telescope um, uh, just in another direction uh, where that star, uh, that far star should be at that um, point of time, according to his calculations. And he found out that um, uh, this is that was like really unexplainable. Um, uh, so when he saw, well, he, he kind of put some black paper on the telescope in order to see. Um, uh, so, so not, not so that light wouldn't come from other stars, right, in his telescope, and. Um, and actually, uh, what happened next is a um, very interesting phenomena. Um, so um, uh, just he, he put uh, just uh, some lenses on the telescope, right? And uh, uh, he, he kind of put some um, um, just um, uh, device. And so he, he just got these um, signals coming from far, far stars. So today, uh, today, this science a light signal uh, is about uh, is experiment about an overlight signal. Yeah, from other stars is available for many groups of scientists. Should I explain this about the superluminary signal? Yes, let, yes, please. Basically, this uh, theory, uh, the information about superluminary superluminary speeds, uh, it was due to Einstein because he said that there are no speeds higher than speed of light. But he, he said that 100 years ago. And but you know, science is a living or organism and there are experiments and if experiments go beyond the current series then we have to review the series i reviewed and revised the series i of course uh, left all the achievements of einstein and other scientists but i showed that there is theoretically a theory in which there are superluminary speeds and superluminary speeds arise because you know uh, to be precise it I would put it like this, why, by, what is the reason why superluminary speeds are not accepted by physics nowadays? Because superluminary speeds determine the classical principle of causality. For example, the principle of causality is that, for example, I knock on this glass and then it uh, like crashes. So there is the cause and the effect. And this is what, uh, how we, uh, what we see in our world. But nowadays it's all the wrong because if there is a superluminary speed then there is a backwards movement in time we sort of used to move only forward but there are, there can be events when there are consequences coming first and then cause from our normal thinking it's impossible but experiments show that this is true but is it possible that the reason is somewhere deeper and we just cannot observe it yes you're right the, the reason is deeper and there is a separate conversation about that and my teacher albert einstein also told about this in 1930s uh, two great people met, Albert Einstein and Rabindranath Tagore. It's the Hin Indian physicist and philosopher. And he had the major dispute regarding the fact whether God exists and whether what is primary matter or consciousness. They discussed this subject and Einstein, of course, said that no, I'm a materialist. He used to be a materialist. He denied all this. But although he mentioned God many times relating to quantum mechanics and uh, quantum mechanics, 
mechanics, etc. But after that meeting with Rabindranath Tagore, he wrote an article, Religion and Science. And in this article, he wrote that if God exists, then there should uh, the law, the classical principle of causality should be violated. These are his words, literally. So basically, if we find violations of the classical principle of causality in experiments, this means that there is an indirect confirmation of the existence of God, because God cannot use 300,000 seconds per kilometers per second uh, speed. He uses super luminary speeds and, of course, instantaneous signals because for him it is necessary, for God it is necessary, because God should know everything all the time, at every point, what is happening all around the universe and produce reaction. Basically, we did, did discuss the universe, the cosmic space, and uh, regarding generators of free energy. Actually, they will allow us to travel in space, because right now we think about fuel that we need to travel in space, but we cannot take an unlimited number amount of uh, fuel. But if we can move with at a super luminary speed, that means that traveling to exoplanets and distant planets, it becomes realistic within the human life. And with respect, in, in this respect, could you please share an information? Maybe there are uh, some technologies of engines or some technologies that will allow us to move somewhere based free energy. Yes, the two problems which I personally was not dealing with, not just theoretically, but also was uh, doing something with my hands. It's the problem of, the, of a totally new traveling movement in space and the attainment of energy from vacuum. That's what I was trying to do with my hands. I had such skill. And I can say the following. Regarding the technology of creating new sources of energy or pure energy, or it is called the, the zero point energy, that's how it is called abroad. So basically, these technologies, if we can show it right now, some slides from my paper, it is possible for us to see it. Yes, we can last the technical support to show. Mr. Shipov's uh, slides. Yes, you need to show the slide of the engine of the Earth, please. The Earth's engine. It's an American uh, engine. Yes, uh, there is a slide. Yeah, right here. The uh, Earth engine, it's an invention of an American engineer. Could you please turn on the video so that it will run? There is a link and you have an opportunity to launch the video. Yeah. Yeah, that's right. Uh, I can just say a few words. It's the engine. This is how it works. It generates uh, 25 kilowatts of power. If we launch a generator to it, connect a generator, it will produce the power of 25 kilowatts. It was invented by an American inventor, Dennis Danzig. And he was mentioned by the fam in the famous American journal, Wall Street Journal. And uh, basically, uh, they mentioned, the journal mentioned that for such an invention, the scientist was supposed to have a Nobel Prize. But basically, we have uh, here we have four independent cameras who, who, that recorded his work from various sites. They launched this engine in a separate room about uh, spring in March, and since that time, last year, the room is totally closed, nothing is connected to this engine, but this engine is work. It's a demonstration of the fact that there is a certain source of energy that does not require any external energy. And the next slide, 
It's the generator of Andrei Slobodan. If you, if we may see it, could you please launch this slide? Um, Andrei Slobodan's generator. Andrei Slobodan is our man who graduated from Bauman University in Moscow. Who his uh, the uh, uh, he was uh, of Ukrainian origin and he also uh, produced something like a Tesla uh, generator. He used uh, uh, he used uh, the uh, special devices invented by Tesla. And when I visited him in February last year or the, the year before the last year, he showed me this generator. Yes, here is the slide. Andrei Slobodan's generator. This generator, uh, the size of this generator is 65 centimeters in length and 35 centimeters in height and about 40 centimeters in depth. So it can fit into a trunk of a car very easily. You can put this into the trunk of your car. The power is 10 kilowatts and uh, in the morning, you uh, accumulate your batteries in the car fully charged for example you have a tesla car and you can use this for charging your um, car with energy and here you here you can see below the image there is a tesla car and there is a wire connection and this generator 13 hours took this generator to charge uh, the car with energy but when you wake up in the morning you just put, get into your car and you go around driving and put it again and and this is working this car does not require fuel at all and this provides freedom to people exactly it's a great freedom for people and if such a generator is more powerful which is quite possible for example this one is 10 kilowatts it's about about, you know, it's an apartment where there is a TV, a refrigerator, light bulbs, heating, 10 kilowatts. It's, you know, for a 40, 40 square meter apartment, it can actually provide you with energy for all the devices and all appliances. You won't have to put pay any money for utilities. You just buy this generator once and it will work. Of course, it's not a Perpetuum mobile, um, there is nothing eternal in matter. Something can break, like a car, TV can break. But the point of this eternity is that you don't need to use any external energy sources. For example, in Siberia, it is very hard to put some cables. But if you buy such a generator, you can live in a house in Siberia in a little yurt, and you will have a sort of source of energy and have all the benefits of civilization in your place. This is what science gives you. And I would like to remind you that now on the platform Alatra International Power Public Movement, there is a project Creative Society, and this is a society that is aimed at human, at his benefits, and such technologies can become the material basis from which we can step. Right, and you know, um, uh, what uh, we are leading to is that all um, to these technologies, actually they meet such resistance from the scientific community, and not uh, even from the scientific scientific community, but I would say even from business one, and I would even say uh, from the politicians, because of course they do not like this um, uh, this kind of ideas, right, of free energy and uh, technologies. But uh, uh, just what concerns a free movement, right, uh, in uh, space, um, uh, in outer space, please let us watch a video with uh, uh, just Cube, right? Yeah, you can see that we have opportunities here as well. Uh, we can actually move in space without any jet engine. And uh, please let us watch. So you see, right? It's um, a jet engine and uh, uh, 
Uh, it is sexually kind of inside, right? And it is, well, uh, this key, right? It, it, it is like alive because it, it works of, um, due to inertion forces. You just um, kind of fi fix, right? Uh, the wheeling, uh, right, generator just with the help of uh, inertion force, and you make it move uh, the way you uh, want. So if you put this key into space, it will be moving just the same way as here, you can see it, and without any kind of outer um, help. And this is uh, actually uh, an image or a sample of the future engine um, that will allow us to use the forces of inertia for movement, because if we analyze actually the movement of um, uh, uh, UFOs, flying sources, right, sources, so uh, they move uh, as if they uh, have uh, just this uh, knowledge of inertia, right? They actually operate uh, inertia laws and uh, it just everything is kind of inside right um, they do not move like our flying objects uh, planes they are moving kind of um, not alone some trajectory but kind of more or less uh, I would say broken trajectory right about 90 degrees to the side so to say because uh, actually if we move along uh, the direct trajectory it, it, well uh, it, it needs more energy right uh, exactly and and uh, from there, if, if we have uh, just from our point of view, if we put a person into UFO and uh, it, it is moving like uh, just very uh, super, super luminary speed, right? Then, of course, uh, then this force of inertia, it would kind of uh, break person instead of they smash it. And actually, um, right, it's uh, interesting even for military aviation. Again, uh, what just in regard to the theory, so many scientists have come to this um, understanding. Uh, there is such a scientist, Miguel Aglibier, he was the first to publish uh, such a discovery that uh, it would be possible to create uh, such an engine. And uh, um, a engine is known all over the world, and it's um, NASA. And uh, I'm sure, I'm sure that they, and even here in Russia, in Roscosmos organization, I'm sure that they know it. Uh, but uh, space kind of right uh, um, scientists, they weren't kind of didn't show that interest in such kind of engine. So it, if I got it right, we can uh, just create such an engine, and. Uh, we can try even to fly in space uh, far, far away. And, uh, but of course, we would like to have uh, just uh, a connection with the Earth. So um, what about the technologies of, the, I mean, this um, communication, of technology of instant communication? Today, well, today, uh, we have a group of researchers, and some of them, they live in Germany, and they uh, do study this um, um, Toshin communication, I would say, or this kind of space communication, right? Uh, because if I say initial communication, right, it doesn't sound okay. Uh, but um, so another group of scientists uh, um, is situated in Australia, and the third one is in Tomsk in Russia. And uh, also, so, so um, in Moscow, there is a group which um, uh, just studies this uh, super luminary connection. And if we have uh, kind of, um, we have an engine, right, which uh, just generates, right, and we have a receiver. So if we imagine that the generator, right, it is actually located in Australia, uh, in the city of Perth, and the receiver is located in Stuttgart, Germany. Uh, the um, distance uh, is uh, 13,800 um, kilometers, and the generator um, generates a signal with the power of uh, two, um, just Billy, uh, just two million uh, watts, and uh, it actually it has an electrical basis in general, right? So um, it is just 
uh, this is all for generators that kind of they have to this uh, all generators they have two components of the electric um, sign of torsion, right? And uh, if uh, well, if we do not know the uh, measurement speed exactly, but we know that uh, is the, that this signal goes instantly for, uh, from um, Australia to Germany to Stuttgart. So, and we see that the receiver in Germany, right, it consumes um, these uh, signals. And what is um, important if we talk about the electromagnetic signal uh, at such distance, then of course it is just impossible in order to. To um, transmit the signal because we do really need lots and lots of energy for that, and uh, and it is connected actually with uh, the fact that torsion signals uh, the, the, there are of two kinds I would say uh, which are transmitted with help of the superluminary speed or or I would say even just uh, I would even say that three kinds of speed Piece, right, um, preliminary, superliminary, and um, uh, just instantaneous um, uh, speed, right? And of course, there are just uh, issues that um, uh, right, we 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 cannot uh, kind of transmit, for example, our today's live broadcast some um, different distances, right, or the distances that we would like to transmit. But, uh, uh, for, for example, we we can uh, just produce right video signal, and this system, it is very difficult, I mean, um, system of transmitting signals. Um, and so we actually, we are not able to control initial fields, right? Um, we absolutely don't know how to do that. And today, uh, uh, actually, we are uh, today. We are living in such times that national fields they play uh, the most important role, and uh, so we, we we can see that uh, right when uh, it passes through um, just a signal uh, goes th through the media uh, just space. Uh, they do not have these properties, I would say, these wa torsion waves, right? And uh, I would like to just um, tell you uh, that uh, everyone who uh, just studied physics, so each signal, uh, wave signal, right, uh, it has three characteristics. This is the uh, amplitude, uh, the uh, signal uh, frequency, and phase. And so the torsion signal, uh, they are just uh, the busy. They associated with a signal, um, right? Um, they associated with a signal for a um, phase, and so roughly speaking, um, we just kind of. Um, the phase we're talking is like an angle, a, a angle, and the angle is a rotation, and rotation of what? Uh, a rotation of something creates this torsion field, and um, uh, the phase, uh, just the torsion fields, they create uh, this. Uh, um, so, uh, okay, uh, signals, right? Uh, this is very difficult, uh, complicated science. Um, and who is doing it today? Um, well, there are unfortunately just few scientists who are studying that today. But today, right, we have kind of almost free energy, and we have new kind of um, vehicles, I would say, right? And there is still one, one more optimistic uh, question: What? What do you think? Um, is traveling in space is it possible to travel in space? Of course, it is uh, because I believe that uh, these uh, uh, kind of uh, devices, vehicles that uh, um, we have to today, well, not we have, but people who are, uh, have UFOs uh, samples. So they actually these people they um, uh, have this opportunity because. Uh, uh, what actually? What, what is time? Time is a rotation, uh, and uh, it's a rotation of something. So even at uh, yeah, uh, nuclear nuclear time, it is also kind of um, about rotation of fluctuation, rotation of oscillatory process actually. And if we can control the rotation, then we are able to control the time. This is the connection. 
In summer, we had uh, a lab broadcast with the astrophysicists, and they also told us about the pulsar, about the exact time of this rotation. Um, yeah, probably so. And uh, just um, uh, just pointed out uh, the information that we have lots of technologies to today that uh, uh, and like torsion uh, technologies um, just um, yeah, it's just except as the energy sources. So uh, can we use them also for the, just other purposes? Of course, especially for medicine, I would say, because uh, this is the, I, I would say that the most important way of uh, development is in medicine. This is the uh, usage of torsion uh, fields. And um, um, uh, moreover, I would say that it is already used, but kind of, you know, under a different brand name or whatever. But uh, um, I may give you some examples with the help of slides or presentation. If you may, please show us um, the slide, uh, the project of uh, projection, radiation pro just project slide, right? And um, I would like to say that uh, uh, about uh, different um, kind of medicine, just a few words, that uh, that medicine would do without any doctors or any drugs. Uh, yeah, it sounds uh, like science fiction today, but actually it is true because each person is a doctor for his body. So this is exactly, oh, and here you can see about this uh, radiation, right? There is a group of international scientists uh, who do uh, the following. Uh, the, the main essence of this project is that each object has, uh, has well, kind of information matrix and, uh, um, well, um, it's uh, about the drugs as well. So drugs, they have these um, information metrics and this information metrics, it um, has this cure effect on people, on people's body. Uh, and uh, so um, a drug is not considered only of chemical elements, right? But uh, these chemical elements they, they are of a drug, they have uh, side effects, you know, because they kind of treat uh, one thing, right, anybody, but actually they, they harm the other ones. And, um, and these are uh, just new kind of um, uh, medicine, right? What what they do? They kind of rewrite this information matrix, and it's been known all for a long time. So uh, we can uh, just rewrite information matrix from any drug, for example, uh, just uh, like uh, they were experimenting on water, right? And uh, this um, set of kind of information is like data bank, uh, just uh, is kind of made a data bank. And then this information uh, has a property that it can be transmitted. It can be transmitted with the help of the computer uh, or at a different diff distance. Um, and, uh, for example, in just uh, various just parts of the world. And there were um, experiments and research in many cities in Russia and in other countries in the US, for example. So they uh, have conferences on this topic. And these drugs, these kind of new types of drugs, if, if you just go to this website, uh, new farm, kind of new pharm pharmacology, you have a list of drugs there that uh, they may send you and uh, before that they sent to you they could send you even just free of charge but today uh, they kind of sent information about these drugs and uh, rewrite it um, well they used to do it on uh, the discs but um, th then you put uh, just um, a glass of water uh, and uh, on the disc this disc and then uh, in a few minutes, right, uh, 30, 60 minutes, the patient gets this water and the effect, of course, is actually the same as if he had, uh, he might have taken the drug, um, or chemical medicine, I would say. And this is, again, it has been known for a long time, but since you understand that pharmacology today, right, is actually big business. So when, like, I walk down the street, I see that, well, uh, yeah, pharmacology uh, prospers in our time. And uh, 
in order to uh, in, in, in order just to uh, go to this new kind of medicine right we need to change something and of course uh, this new kind of medicine is our future but uh, i would say it's even transmissionary stage intermediate stage and actually uh, in order to um just to, uh, just to get rid of any disease, actually, a person can do it himself. And uh, because um, if you know that everything is uh, the main essence, um, the, the main reason of our illnesses is it's actually it's our fault, it's our uh, inner world, right? Mistakes like uh, uh, faults uh, that uh, just negative thoughts and everything. Because of course the outer world it has an impact on us, but uh, a more uh, kind of um, um, material just uh, but uh, thoughts and we ha what we have connections in this material world right uh, they influence um, this kind of invisible ones even uh, they influence us more and all the reasons of uh, diseases it's like uh, it, it all depends on the uh, inner world so what what ideas what um, intentions people have how they react to the different situations actually this all makes imprint uh, imprint onto you and it makes a person um, uh, just ill that is why I believe that the future um, the future medicine is the medicine without doctors and any drugs at all even without this information dr uh, drugs that I presented this is wonderful As, uh, what about agriculture yes uh, agriculture is very interesting also could you please show the slides for example for example show us the tomatoes okay look rotations are uh, two uh, okay, maybe in two directions right-handed and left-handed if when from the vacuum uh, void uh, em matter emerges, it always has a right-handed or left-handed rotation, so that the sum, the joint amount, will be zero. Because when there is zero, there is something and some anti something. There is, uh, for example, there is an electron, uh, electron and a positron. Uh, the electron, uh, uh, the spin of the electron uh, is directed upwards. The positron is downward and uh, Dirac was the first one to notice this but everything from from deal from vacuum there is always a negative and a positive masses arise and if it's not if it is not so then the preservation of energy law is violated now we have a present-day theory and probably Nobel Prize will be given to it it's the emergence of universe from vacuum as a result of Big Bang you know there is such a theory that there is a big bang in the vacuum in some point in the universe and the whole universe emerged and it is expanding according to the experimental data so according to the theory it you know it misses one major property it doesn't satisfy the uh, law of preservation because the mass of this emerging universe is positive but if we take any theoretical physicist and ask what about the preservation law he says oh no you know i don't know so this doesn't fit into the but but probably this theory will get even the nobel prize and there are people who claim for that one of them is Linda Andre Linda I know him uh, quite well we met in Fian and uh, we talked to him in particular uh, with Steve Hawking as well if you know him it's a person who used to be paralyzed and uh, he moved in wheelchair he talked through a computer but he had such brilliant eyes like like you know like emeralds and Andre was nominated for the Nobel Prize with his work works regarding expansion of the universe and emergence of the universe from vacuum but it violates the preservation energy preservation law and i cannot expect his theory because of that so let's go back uh, there are right-handed and left-handed spins and there are torsion fields with these various rotations there are torsion generators and torsion receivers uh, you know on my slides we, we can see such slides but if we use right-handed 
and detorsion pills than in weak doses if uh, detorsion fields are weak, uh, have weak interaction and impact on the biological objects, not that plants, not just plants, but also human being, it produces a healing effect, but the left-handed torsion fields suppress biological objects. And here we can see tomatoes. They were grown, uh, planted at the same time in one and the same place in the same soil, but some of uh, part of them were watered with uh, water which was charged with left-handed torsion field, and another one, the other ones were growing with the torsion with the water. Uh, that were charged with the right-handed torsion fields and the difference is huge and you know especially in ukraine in vinnytsa there used to be an institute and i think that it is still there it's an agriculture institute where they use torsion generators right-handed and left-handed in order to exert impact only not only on plants but also on uh, animals like geese all the time you know i can finish with a joke as a result the geese uh, started dying uh, rarely they started growing very fast and giving more meat but the feed the food for them was in the same amount so they faced the problem of feeding these geese that's why this technology was forbidden yes because this his weight uh, the geese's weight depend on, on the amount of food yes they were developing very quickly they got these properties which were supposed to be thanks to torsion generator um, for example within a short period of time they were these uh, poultry these birds were supposed to gain more weight but if food is insufficient then they kind of said the technology is bad because uh, there is not even food etc etc so here the law of preservation of energy works in any case unfortunately we don't use such technologies so far because we have a shortage of food but it's not the main goal of a human being to be if, to have sufficient food right there are other things if we talk about gaining good harvest at the same uh, area of land it's it is the way to do this through torsion generators and i i'm positive that uh, once we will have to do this in this particular way because nature uh, even this year nature reminds us of the fact that we are doing something wrong there are cataclysms there are deviations there are floods in some places and drought drought in some places yes the planet earth reacts to our bad behavior yes i already said that the earth is a living organism just like everything else Today we have touched upon so many technologies and probably you can also comment on how to use torsion fields in material in studies of materials for example you said that we can use uh, torsion fields for changing the informational matrix of drugs but maybe something else yes absolutely right and this work started uh, in the year 2000 we went to south korea and we conducted an experiment there a series of experiments in the metallurgical institute not far from seoul 100 kilometers from the capital city we brought a detorsion generator there we launched everything launched the frequencies because you uh, you know it's not just you launching but there is a technology you are supposed to know how to uh, maintain everything but the koreans did everything from their side they had silumine uh, it's an alloy of uh, aluminium and other metals it's a uh, it's a good material for the uh, combustion engines and these are koreans working on with our generators here you can see on the left below there are 
uh, radiators, torsion radiators, such cones, and on the right there are generators and Akimov's generator and the launching generators. On the left uh, there is the uh, Taman's oven where there is melting. The metals, uh, thick metals are melting, several centimeters thickness, then there is a layer of bricks, then there is a big uh, a little vessel where the melting is taking place and then there is a finger thick coil uh, with, a, with a current electric current of several hundred amperes so we just launched uh, switched on and switched off the generator and the Koreans did everything themselves so we put there the materials we melted the silamine and you can we can show you the results it was a high quality silamine and much faster than by, by the basic technology uh, like here you can see silamine which is produced uh, in on a regular basis you have this um, black dots this means that there are caverns in the structure and this metal cannot be used for example for the combustion engines uh, you know but after we are affected the uh, this alloy with the torsion generator this cavern it's a little bit piece and you can just cut it off but the whole metal is pure and did that we just were we were just standing and watching after that koreans began to use it use this technology and you know, we kind of uh, development of silumin production. Our country didn't get uh, such development, but in India they do this. And uh, if 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 it is possible, could you please show us the work of the group from city of Perm? There is a group of. Uh, scientists headed by Vyacheslav Panov, the doctor of physical and mathematical scientists. He undergo training in our organization. It's the inter-field venture and non-traditional technology center. Our organization was established by our government and it has been working for, it worked for six years, but in 1991 when the great, uh, you know, property division began and everything else, many scientific establishments were closed in Russia, so we also got under this process and we were deprived of funding and then everything was on our you know enthusiasm and amateur uh, intentions and inspiration so on these slides unfortunately i cannot show them uh, but there are experiments uh, there were experiments and they were conducted in many academic institutes but the permian group performed these experiments not in the laboratory but in the on the production side you see in Perm there is Kama River and there is a tremendous factory three uh, kilometers in uh, square kilometers There's, they produce steel uh, of various kinds and they pro conducted this experiment in their workshops the torsion generator that is only uh, 200 watts uh, it was uh, acting through the stone uh, masonry and masonry and actually it turned the steel into high quality steel and uh, five, uh, 50 tons of metal were processed the iron were processed and to you see 200 watts of electric current just changes the structure of iron of tons of iron can you imagine the spin of the torsion field you know um, torsion field is generated by the spin the by the rotation direction of the electron and if you change the spin of the electron the torsion field arises it is known by 
science and there are works and books on this subject for example there is a sarum magnetic and there is a crystal structure of a metal and the spin, uh, spin vectors of eight on atoms, if you uh, knock on one part of this metal piece, the spin wave will go through the whole metal. In this structure, there are electrons and their spins are directed in the same direction. That's why there is this magnetic property. Yes, that's right. But even if we knock, or these gyroscopes will change uh, the wave, there was this wave wave but when metal stops as um, the mainstream science believes the wave obey but it's that's wrong it turns out that when the piece of metal stops the, the, the there are devices that can launch such a wave torsion wave in vacuum and it goes through the whole metal for example through mason through brick layer uh, and and it, by going through this the torsion wave changes the structure at the moment when uh, the metal uh, cools down for example and, and the crystal structure of the of, of the molecules change and the properties of the metal change basically they change to such an extent that steel becomes harder and more plastic for example if it's a hard steel it is uh, quite you know uh, breakable but uh, this on this in this case on the contrary it is durable hard and uh, flexible the economic effect which they calculated from such a technology for example from one oven within one year they uh, had the saving of 200 million rubles and for this they have all the documents these are not just words they have documents they sent to me this information so in a word, there is a great economic effect of such technologies. Moreover, you mentioned that uh, it is possible to rewrite the stru matrix stru information matrix not only of medicines, but influence metals. Yes, in this generator, there is a special chamber where there are metals. Um, and generally speaking, in order to get high quality steel, you need to and, uh, add nickel, molybden, and other elements, and it's quite an expensive technology, but it turns out that torsion technology allows to uh, place this ligated metal into chambers of the generator and the property of the steel becomes such as if the highest most expensive elements were added because this is due to the transfer of the information matrix and it is possible to produce the same steel without expensive additives when uh, you know these people worked for a long time Basically, this saving arises from saving uh, additives, yes, mostly, but, but uh, the good thing is that in order to, but you know, there are special organizations that buy uh, uh, these additives from abroad, they earn huge money on that that's why they don't like this technology so the, uh, the the negative side of any technology is the human factor because for example people when they see some new technology that deprives them of job and uh, and money they treat new technologies badly so we need to create conditions when people do not lose jobs they need to have foundation uh, in order not to resist progress yes exactly this indicates that these technologies despite the fact that these are the technologies of the future but they greatly will greatly influence the restructuring of human relations in society this indicates that basically yes these technologies really exist uh, this has been in the the you know history of humanity all the time 
when the new technologies in the, uh, the textile industry rules in 19th century there were strikes of people because they uh, want, didn't want to lose job but it would be nice to uh, you know but time presses us time shows that we should change something in society and this is what alatra is doing basically basically this technology is not just deprive people of jobs but they allow us to be more efficient in growing plants and uh, producing medicines if we change human relations yes we need to change relationships between people because the society which we have right now does not like this technology Technologies and this current society does not accept technologies because we need changes in society. The, the fact that young people go outside in the streets, they feel what should be. And, you know, new technologies will continue developing and they will provide new space for people. For example, we can requalify people, change, give them new qualification and skills. Yes, this is being done because right now development of robotics is uh, at such a high speed and robots will soon load and unload cargoes. They will do the heavy job instead of people and this is already done at such a level. Um, that's why many people have to change their job, the way of they work. And there are so many accountants who, you know, just sit, uh, are sitting and calculating. You know, for example, there is a warehouse with plenty of goods, but now everything is robotized and the warehouse should be fully automated. There should be only one person who operates the computer and everything else is done by the machines. So basically this process is on the way, it is on the way in many trends, in many fields, and in particular it, uh, it is the change of the scientific paradigm. And uh, there is another very important point which you didn't ask me about, these are the supreme worlds. Yes, but before we come to that point, we kindly ask our technical support to launch the trailer of the kaleidoscope of facts. We kindly invite you and our viewers to the next e episode of the kaleidoscope of facts that will take place on march 13th about the prospects of our civilization and basically you would be very much welcome there and as the speaker probably you'll share your amazing technologies there with people yeah that's my purpose that's my civilization can we consider our society to be civilized? The world has come to a verge. The situation is serious. The only way out is evolutionary quantum leap. Leap from doom of consumer society into a whole new format, creative society. What are the three conditions to become a civilization? first one is unification, the second one is the absence of a tyrant, meaning a tsar, a king, no matter what we call him, and the third mandatory condition is possession of free energy. That's when a civilization begins to develop. Learn more about what are prospects of civilization development in the creative society and live broadcast kaleidoscope of facts. Human life is the highest value. Life without wars. Ecology restoration. Benefits for a human in various fields of existence. Instantaneous solution of all material problems. Possession of free energy. Physics of the future. Manipulation with microparticles and management of micro world. Manipulating matter. Wasteless production. Instant healing of human body. Prolongation of human life beyond the usual lifespan. Non-invasive cosmetic corrections of human body. Almost immediate acquiring of skills on professional levels. Highly developed technologies. 
flights to other galaxies. Colonization of new planets. Super civilization. And what if all this is just a beginning? We invite experts, scientists from different fields of science, researchers and bloggers for joint research. And together, we will be able to find answers to these and other questions. It is time to bring the truth back to the people. March 13th of 2021, Eighth International Online Conference, Prospects of Civilization within the framework of the unique which is like no other in the world. Yes, here we're already live and we have several questions for you all. So one of them is, could you please name discoveries that or one discovery that could help people and the entire civilization to turn to switch totally different level of development, not just technically, but spiritually. Yes, this is in, this is contained in the uh, equations of the zero physical vacuum. These equations are quite complex, but you know, it is possible to work with them. It is possible to solve them, to analyze them, and to find correspondence with those equations in the reality which is around. It turns out that in the equations, in addition to the material world, there exists an opportunity to describe something supermaterial world, supermaterial, beyond material, which cannot be related to matter as such, because those world, worlds do not possess energy. You know, the energy which we understand in a common uh, meaning, common understanding, it's like energy is an ability of a body to do some work energy is what all particles and fields have in the current physical picture of the world everything is has energy nature but there are objects that do not possess energy although they are described analytically in the theory of physical vacuum and these objects are connected with the, the new non-explored worlds i would say and uh, i don't know how to call them there are different names like the worlds of super high reality sub sub material worlds or super material worlds and uh, so there are some objects that have information but do not have energy they have information but do not have energy and uh, previously we always linked energy information together but it turns out that information is a primary thing it is more primary than energy Energy. but you know information actually creates material objects so the creative nature creative principle relates to information all the time so the higher worlds actually begin with totally nothing total nothingness it seems like total nothingness cannot do anything from the materialistic point of view but it's wrong this whole concept is wrong because such an ordinary language of contemporary physics and mathematics probably we will not be able so far to study these uh, supermaterial uh, or beyond material objects there should be some other methods basically humanity has religion and religion has uh, an attitude, a relation to that, because religion uses a totally different methods, totally different mind, let's say, because our mathematical mind, which uh, produces, makes certain conclusions, works with material objects, our mind reminds of the computer with the hardware, with software and operational man memory, but and aside from such a knowledge, gaining knowledge through such a computer type of consciousness, there are other types of getting knowledge of reality and 
if we take religion, there are religious uh, ways of gaining knowledge. If we speak in a scientific language, first of all, I can say that science and religion will find common language once, but at the same time, there will be such concepts as heart, mind, or mind of the heart, or mind of some other organ. This all is interrelated, and all this works in some other planes of reality, not in the material plane, but in other planes. From here, we have such concepts as spirit, soul, uh, this can be scientifically grounded, and basically uh, the fact that we consist not of our only of our physical body, but we have other bodies as well, starting from the ether uh, field, according to the esoteric uh, sources, astral field, and these fields, these bodies manifest themselves. For example, if you can show uh, for just a second, just a minute, the picture how a human attracts or drags a log with his body. Can you please show Mikhail on the skin? You know, a man is capable of man's body uh, having other energy fields, and these energy fields manifest themselves. For example, in Penza there was a man who could attract uh, 150 kilogram log with his body and he was carrying this plate on his chest he showed that he could move it he uh, you know kind of released the power of thought and this plate started uh, falling from him sliding so he controls his consciousness and through his consciousness he controls the physical process from the point of view of materialism it's a total nonsense from the point of view of of contemporary uh, physics and science it's total nonsense no it's anatoly but there is a video with mikhail yeah it was anatoly who attracts plates of 150 kilograms and he can control consciousness and move a plate uh, along his body so such experiments actually show that we don't know a lot of things so far not many things we don't know anything like so he said, I know that I don't know anything. We are just in the beginning of our way. Apparently, in this world, in this reality, there is consciousness that are higher than ours. These consciousnesses are far beyond the development, they are far advanced compared to us, and they are advanced in understanding the uh, outer world. So we are not the ultimate point of development in nature. We are just on a certain stage, maybe at the beginning stage. Yes, I would say that somewhere at the beginning stage, but not at the highest one. So, this discovery is very important that there are other worlds and there is an analytical description of these worlds. Gennady Ivanovich, there is also, you know, so many things to do, to discover, to work on, but this doesn't happen as fast as possible. As, as we would like to have. So the question is, what kind of qualities should a scientist have in order to go beyond some limits of science? And what are, should be the external conditions for a scientist to implement such technologies in practice? You know, based on my own experience, the first condition is for doing this job, in fact, is to be honest. And strangely enough, honesty is a very important property, especially characteristic, especially for a scientist. For example, if I see that there is a phenomena that takes place, really takes place, and it is repeated, but I kind of close my eyes on this phenomena, I'm dishonest in such a case as a scientist. This violates scientific ethics. 
I must not, regardless of my status, whatever you are in science, if you see an experiment and it is repeated, you should admit honestly that it is such. But you can admit that you cannot explain why this is so, but this will be honest. But if you don't talk about this and forbid others to talk about this and even persecute, like in the time of Inquisition, that people were interested in something and they were persecuted, it's inhuman human not just dishonored it's inhuman unhuman why why not dealing with what is really there and since it doesn't fit into some old science it is forbidden no it's wrong it's kind of like in inquisition times but the second point is surely you see when i was drawn driven into a point to the point that i will have probably to run some business to earn money in order to develop all this i no longer hope for any support because uh, there was so much effort and time spent on proving, going around, showing proofs to people, but, you know, it's like an impenetrable wall. I cannot break this wall. I have so many letters to different people, different officials from different levels, and it's kind of useless. I'll have to do everything on my own. What you do on your own, it's wonderful, and what I do, it I should do this. Yes, if we look like this, we look at our conversation, and basically, in our format, consumer format of society, such advanced technologies seems not to be working. They cannot work because there are some interests and some people who get benefits and, s and profits from the technologies that are currently in place. Also, there are fears. Yes, there are natural resources, they can be extracted and earned money on. Yes, also there is a pharmaceutical industry that also gives great benefits and profits to some people, and it's not beneficial for those people to you know, so that everyone would treat themselves from free energy, to have free energy at home. Also, there are fears that people will lose jobs. But if we are building the creative society, basically all these problems are resolved. So the whole point is to change our life, to change our relationships with each other, and then everything will be possible. It's not terrible if we'll have less work, but we will have a shorter work day. We'll be able to do something else. Technologies will enable us to have everything and even more than we have now. So, you know, yes, that, but that's the, the hardest work is to change our consciousness. It's a tremendous work. And who is supposed to do this? nature so nature will push us to do this you mean nature is something external or every person should do this some take some step yes there will be an external impetus you know nature is just the same person as all of us and if you treat some person and try to drain something from him try to you know like many the times of energy animals are, lo are lost and many times of plants are lost but if you do something to a person badly it reacts in the same way if you do something badly to nature it reacts basically again going back to consciousness everything is conscious in this world we need to work with the consciousness of the of planet earth with the consciousness of another person with the consciousness of a cat, a dog, and even a mosquito. We need to 
kind of, you know, relate to all that, learn to do this, and in this way we will be succeeding. But you know, a human is quite is kind of a conservative animal. It is conservative in terms of his consciousness. Yeah, yeah, we have this dual nature, the beast which we could should tame, and in order to be human, yes, really. But a human being is an animal by its, his nature. But we also have external world and internal world. The external world is you know at the material level we are interacting with all people with the world around but our internal world is our interaction with ourselves we think about certain things and the harmony there is uh, there is often disharmony lack of harmony between this one of them says take this another one says no you know but there is some this con concept as conscious conscience and like you said that you have to be honest towards yourself and others so we need to listen to the voice to heed the voice of conscience but you know in our world unfortunately many people have totally lost it but we need to at least return conscience back some people lose conscience well, again, I'm kind of switching to my colleague scientists, but if you see that a person has certain experiment and it is repeated, but the colleagues do not react, that means that there is no conscience. You cannot but react because, you know, like science, scientists and all scientists of the world and the academies of science, their main task is to go beyond to go beyond the current knowledge. That's the main goal. And that's the main requirement which many scientists violate. They violate professional ethics, which means that they do not have conscience. If you violate professional ethics, you don't have conscience. Like in the same way, if you are a lawyer or a prosecutor, he, he uh, such a person also pr violates professional ethics and should be judged if he for example steals 12 billion dollars from uh, he's supposed to prosecute and judge him who stole but if he gets billion of that amount himself he it takes it uh, it's wrong yeah. mr shipper we would like to invite you to the conference on the 20th of March, it will take place on the 20th of March, and this conference uh, basically relates to how we will be building the creative society. It is called to create society what the prophets dreamed of we talked today about science and religion basically all the prophets brought knowledge into this world including the knowledge about how this society should be arranged and this conference actually is intended to show what the prophets dreamt of so this is not such some kind of a science fiction but it's not a utopia but all the prophets talked about this and it it is time to implement this in real life. If we talk about the prophets, there is such an American physicist, he was dealing with string theory and with quantum gravitation. He wrote a book, Difficulties in Physics and what followed them. And he asked him such a rhetorical question, why is physics in crisis? Basically because all physicists can be split into prophets and amateurs and workshoppers prophets they have they do the breakthroughs in physics but most of physicists are just you know craftsmen <laughs> If, uh, for example, there is a super collider, CERN, it's an accelerator of elementary particles. It costs more than t more than ten billion dollars. There are four thousand highly qualified people, scientists working on CERN, and they say themselves that among them there are thirteen Einsteins at least. But when they write an article, a new article, 500 authors in this work, the result is like several lines. You know, I don't think it is really a great scientist because 
It's kind of a factory. It's a factory where 3,000 people are working and they kind of have this interaction with themselves. They have certain intellectual materials being processed, but it is not profits. They are not profits in science. It seems to me they are not following the way shown by Einstein as the prophet of science. They kind of deviated. Uh, they have more work than sense, than point. We need prophets in science. In any society, prophets are needed. And we hope that once at the lead of our society, there will be a prophet, a good genius, a good, honest genius. That's the kind of leader we need, who would not be lying, who would tell lies, who would not tell lies, but tell the truth. Because all the information is reported to the top, and in order to know everything, he needs to have... But but this good genius have, needs to have good people around him and support. Thank you very much for your answers. You gave us such an interesting support, uh, overview of technical novelties, and we kindly invite you and everyone else and all our viewers to the conference, which we already named. It is the conference on the 20th, 20th of March, and now we'll see the trailer of the conference. Thank you. unprecedented event of present history, initiative that comes from people around the world, main project of humanity. People stopped being silent about urgent issues of our society, how it all started. May 2019, International Online Conference, Society, The Last Chance, 140 countries of the world, Hundreds of thousands of people online, hundreds of broadcast platforms translated into seven languages simultaneously. If we all want to live in peace, why do we have a world of violence and destruction? It is up to us to build a different world. How can we do it? December 2020, Creative Society, United We Can. 180 countries of the world, millions of people online, thousands of streaming platforms, 35 languages simultaneously translated. People have voiced today's reality and what they truly desire. And it is the creative society. All cultures have an image of the ideal world people want to live in. A world that prophets talked about. The time has come when we can make it real. How will we use this chance? Let's meet March 20, 2021, 3 p.m. Greenwich Mean Time and 10 a.m. Eastern Time. International online event of global scale. Creative Society, what the prophets dreamed of. This is the day the world will unite to find out the truth, join the entire humanity, and spread the message.